Welcome back. Uh, this one's quite a big one. Obviously, I think I've mentioned we're at the IT Security Foundation uh, uh, conference today. Delighted to be joined by Stephen Patterson from ARM. But more importantly today, you are the chair of the IT Security Foundation. So we're delighted to have you. Thank you very much. I suppose the first board call is introduce yourself, give us a bit of a background on you, what it is you do and, and why you're here. Well, thank you very much. Um, I don't think we've got time for me to tell you my whole background. <laughs> I mean, at one stage of my life, I used to sell vacuum cleaners for a living. <laughs> okay. And, you know, they're important uh, yeah. and they were very state-of-the-art vacuum cleaners, you can guess for whom I used to sell them. But, um, you know, security didn't really come into it. Right? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Years on, I now work for Arm, mm -hmm. one of the world's leading tech companies. And um, what you know, what's in Arm's DNA is security of the network, really. Mm -hmm. We have long been great believers in two things, security and energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. And we build security into our designs right from the start. And that's basically the message we want to convey to anyone developing yeah. Digital products. Yeah, perfect. So, how did you end up here then? Was it a conversation between you and John that at uh, Lambert, did someone introduce you? Or? Uh, how did I end up here? And in, in, uh, in, in the chair, in the chair well, of the ITSF. Well, I, you see, the ITSF started about, off the top of my head, seven years ago. Hmm. Uh, and the first meeting was actually rather sort of um, symbolic. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was a trade association called NMI which had assembled a group of companies interested in digital security like ours to meet at Bletchley Park. Now Bletchley Park, as you know, is is the place where famously British scientists, including Turing, mm -hmm. cracked the Enigma code during yeah. the Second World War. And it's still there. You can still visit the hut where all this happened and all the outbuildings yeah. and so on and so forth. So it was a it was a great kind of venue. It really attracted people. Yeah. You can imagine all these kind of I don't like to use this phrase security brief program thing like but anyway all these kind of you know, security <laughs> experts is yeah. what I mean all these kind of security experts really wowed by the idea yeah. of treading in Turing's footsteps at Bletchley Park so we all fetched up and and there was a wide discussion about what could we do to drive up um, security of the network and, yeah you know there were a number of concerns right so tech companies like ours the main concern was look if we if people don't trust the network they won't buy the technology. So mm. it's in all of our interests as tech companies to make it as secure, as trustworthy as possible. So yeah. we were all up for it. And obviously there were people from government officials and so on and so forth who were worried about the impact that yeah. hackers could have on the network and cause serious yeah. damage to critical bits of the national infrastructure. So we all thought it would be a great idea if we started um, essentially... A group, a group of companies together to see what they could do to drive up the approach to security. And at the time, you know, some companies were taking a view, oh, security costs a bit more, and the, yeah. the customers will never pay for it. And yeah. this is only going to be a uh, little CCTV camera that goes on their front porch, you know, but no one's yeah. going to be bothered about that. Um, so it was kind of slightly new and a bit kind of to left field. And over the last few years, what's happened, of course, is that almost everyone has come to that security really does matter. Yeah. So IOTSF was there, we worked on this um, checklist of basic security requirements and ARM, being a le leading uh, player in the field, was invited to take part in it. So we did. Um, anyway, long story short, I eventually um, was persuaded, I think is the word, uh, to take on the chairmanship of, of this thing. <laughs> and. Um, uh, but it was it was fine because it was already a very strong and very well established concern when I when I took it over. So yeah. I didn't need to um, I didn't really need to do much, and it just went from strength to strength organically, which is yeah. the, the kind of chairmanship role I like best. Yeah, perfect. And that was how they persuaded you. You don't have to do a lot. Just be fair. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, don't take up much of your time. Yeah, exactly that. Um, so let's talk about security. What is your view of it at the moment, as it stands right now? Are you seeing a lot more? buy-in a lot more, um, I just used the word in the last one, people waking up to it. Is that what you're seeing at the moment? Yeah, now? well, I mean, sorry, we just heard a talk here this morning from the um, the chief executive of the foundation, and he highlighted a book, uh, which he has read recently, and the title of the book is, This is the Way the World Ends. And the way the world ends, according to this book, is by widespread insecurity in the digital network. Yeah. Uh, and eventually that is exploited by bad actors. 
actors to do serious damage to some of our major institutions, whether it's a hospital or a power yeah. station or something like that. So, so, and, and several people have spoken about that. Well, you know, again, there was another talk where somebody said, actually, all our security is built on sand. Like it's, it's got yeah. very, very yeah, yeah. shaky foundations. So you can, you, you know, there is a serious problem. Uh, yeah. And you can scare yourself, and it's a problem that um, it's a dynamic problem. I mean, it's you know um, the pe- the bad actors out there are very smart people, mm. uh, and they're able to devote time and effort to trying to find vulnerabilities in the network and exploit them. And there are, you know, everybody would admit in the thousand lines of software code there might be seventeen bugs. So yeah. you know, sooner or later. You're going to find one, and you're going yeah. to find one that you can exploit to cause damage. So <clears throat> we mustn't at all be complacent about this, and it's it's never going to go away. Yeah, the problem's always going to be here. Yeah, the trick is always to keep one step ahead if you can. And mm. you know, my my, I was, I was thinking about how I would respond to this kind of catastrophism, and I think my line would be: it doesn't have to be like this. Yeah, I mean, we may not get 101 percent secure systems. But actually, we can get to a position where we make it sufficiently hard for most of the bad actors that people, the public, consumers, you and me, can have trust in what we're buying and how yeah. we're using it and know that in doing so, we're not jeopardising the hospital or the police station yeah. or the power station or whatever. So, and it's getting a bit better. Of course, it's getting better. <coughs> um, you are seeing now various jurisdictions starting to think about regulation, for example. Mm. Now, you know, regulation in this area, the right sort of regulation can actually help drive up security. So yeah. both the British government and, and most recently um, the European Commission and even in Washington, all those jurisdictions are beginning to look now at whether regulation makes sense to drive up the level of security provided in the most basic products. Yeah. And because you know, one of the big problems here is that you know, the digital network is only as safe as its weakest link. So you can't really say, oh, all this little sensor is doing is, 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 is monitoring my front porch. Let's use that example again. Yeah. That, was a, that was a real example of something that I yeah. All it's doing is monitoring my front porch. I don't even care if someone hacks it and sees what's happening on my front porch because actually I, I'm, I'm trying to find intruders. And if they can find an intruder, that's great. We'll find an intruder. <laughs> yeah. But so, so, you know... The, so, so sometimes people would say, or the market would say, people are not going to spend a lot more on yeah. security for a relatively simple device, and they don't think it's in their interest to protect the local hospital or the local power station. So yeah. in that sense, there's a risk of a market failure. So that's where, you know, most usefully regulation can play a part. Yeah. And that, I think, we're going to see over the next year, two years, we're going to see more and more regulation coming in. And of course... You know, industry can see this happening too. So they're beginning to look at, well, how do we get ready for regulation? And yeah. then you come back to things like the IATSF, which has its checklist of basic security criteria. You know, this is what you need to do as a developer to make sure your product's secure. Yeah. And so I, mean, I, I think what we're seeing already is, is companies beginning to look at these bits of advice and trying to build security into their product so that they're ready for when regulation comes at them. Yeah. I think you kind of answered my next question anyway, which was about if you were to give any advice, and it seems to be a regulation. I feel like some of the conversation you've had today and some of the talks that I've, want, uh, I've watched, it seems to be, well, apart from cost, because cost will always come into it, one of, the, one of the issues is obviously with technology moving as quickly as it is, is the security running up alongside? Obviously, you've got quantum computing coming in and stuff like that. So there's another advancement that we've got to worry about. And yeah, I think it's just... How, how we can tackle it in terms of like, there's no silver bullet like you yeah, like, like yeah. you mentioned there's no yeah. real yeah, there we're never going to stop yeah. it yeah. but how yeah. can we control it so yeah. in, in a couple of sentences so Stephen apart from regulation is there anything that you would say advice wise one of the things so example, I sometimes say I mean it's not a couple of sentences but maybe more <laughs> than a couple <laughs> one, of the, one of the things I sometimes say is that this is a bit like the introduction of the motor car in the early 20th century right? yeah. so motor car if we were to draw up pros and cons We'd come up with more cons and pros. It's dangerous. Yeah. You can kill people with it. Petrol is very dangerous. And you can only drive eight miles an hour anyway, so you can practically walk at that <laughs> yeah. speed. So why bother? Yeah. But we, re- we in the 20th century, we released the motor car to do 
the good things it did for us. I know we're all a bit yeah. nervous about cars now, but we were led by a mixture of things. One was, yeah, we made the cars safer, yeah. but also we trained the drivers. We, you developed awareness of what you yeah. look for in a stodgy and dangerous and you avoid it. We, we managed to get insurance schemes to, yeah. to you know, underwrite the costs of, of risks and so on and so forth. And we introduced some rules of the road. So yeah. we had a mixture of those things. And I think that's where we're going to get to with this. A bit of awareness, a bit of regulation, a bit of building security more into products right from the start. Uh, and a bit of you know people gradually having more and more confidence and maintaining the fight against bad actors from one iteration of the product to another. Yeah, superb. I could generally stand here all day and have this conversation with you. Uh, so. But we, we were meant to be keeping them up for five I minutes. I think I talked too long. <laughs> I think I rambled a bit. <laughs> no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Down the um, before we completely wrap up, let's just have, uh, have where to find you. Um, so if you're on social media or... It's fine. It's right, a conversation. Okay. <laughs> um, Where we find you? You can give me arm, right? Stephen yeah. Patterson at arm dot com. There we go. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Thank you very it's much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you, you very much. Very much enjoyed it.